What's up guys, you're excited to attend your first Milsim West event and you don't know what to pack or what it's gonna be like. So, Spencer is not only an employee here, but holds the record for having some of the most hours attended at Milsim West events. Yeah, 75 events since 2013. So we figured he was the perfect expert to come in and kind of give us a shakedown of some basic ruck kit and what you might wanna pack in your gear to make sure that you have an optimal experience. So starting things out, Spencer, why don't you tell us like what kind of pack A you have and maybe what you'd recommend someone look for in a pack when they're preparing to go to a Milson West event. So this pack is a like army issued large Alice pack. I got this one that was modified by Tactical Tailor back like a couple days, decades ago, um, just to have some extra pouches on it to hold more stuff. The old Alice buckles have been replaced by like Vastex buckles. And then there's been some modifications to the lid just to kind of make it easier to deal with. The other stuff on it is I got a carbon fiber frame for it and I got upgraded straps and pads just so it's more comfortable to use. I would say when looking for a pack, the best thing to do is try and find a good high quality large pack instead of multiple small cheaper packs. Like I see a lot of people that'll bring like two assault packs and they'll lash them together or they'll tie a bunch of stuff to the outside. And usually that kind of ends up being a mess and very cumbersome and then people have to like struggle with it the whole time. So for the uninitiated, why do you need a pack? Like how is MSW different from a typical Milsim in that you need to carry all your stuff with you? Like why is that a part of the game and what do people need to be prepared for to do that style of game? So due to the format of the event, it's a 40 hours continuous. There's no real breaks in the event. So you're gonna park and you're gonna do a long check-in process and they'll verify that you have all your equipment and gear with you. And you're going to enter the field and you're gonna stay out there the entire duration of the game and you're not allowed to go back to the parking lot. So that includes eating, sleeping, Everything that you need to to you know survive, I, you know, mm -hmm. I use that term mm -hmm. loosely because we're playing Milsim, mm -hmm. right? Oh, oh, they got me! I oh. can see the light. That might be the sun. But everything that you need to do, everything for the game, needs to be on your person for 40 hours straight. Yeah, you don't necessarily have to carry your ruck on you at all times. You'll probably stash it in some spaces so you can go and get into a quick fight. But yeah, if you if you for some reason you need to go back to the parking lot to go to your car to go grab something because you forgot it, you may not be allowed to come back. So you need to have everything with you. Okay, so with that said, let's get into kind of like the, the bulk elements that make up what you have inside your pack. Now that we've talked about, you know, how to carry it all, what are we carrying? So uh, probably the most important items are gonna be food and water, just so you can sustain yourself for two days, and then also sleeping equipment, just so that you can sleep appropriately and survive the weather and the, the elements. With this pack, I usually try and make sure, because I have so many pockets on the outside, I try to make sure that each pocket has like a designated item in that, so I know okay. where to get to it in the dark and stuff. Okay. So all of my food, for this video, I didn't get, bring any food, but I typically put all of my food in this exact pouch every single time, so I know exactly where it is. And this is just enough to hold two days worth of skimping rations, Okay, I, I suppose. And do you generally do like MREs or cans of Campbell's soup or MREs, a whole bunch of Uncrustables? Like what, you know? Uncrustables are, are great. Okay. Uh, MREs are an option. I just typically find it annoying to source them and then repack them and everything. So everything that I try and get that's a consumable, I will get at a Walmart. Cause no matter where I go, there's gonna be a Walmart super center somewhere. So I've kind of picked out all my list of things that I get from there. So I'll usually bring packs of tuna, packs of spam, a squeeze pack of peanut butter, and then a bunch of Walmart fruit gummies. Sure, okay, all right. So that's your so that's your food storage pouch. Also external on the pouch are just kind of regular use items that you might be needing in the game, or is that also like your keep clean kit and everything else? Yeah, I mean, I can go through all that. So each one has kind of different stuff. So this one is, I mean, larger items, but I usually use this as things that will be camp stuff. So in here, I've got a foldable saw so I can make like a nice shelter or a sleep area. Basically, if you're sitting anywhere, you need to be improving your covering your shelter so I can cut down trees and cut down branches, stuff like that. Um, this is just my toiletry kit. So I've got like tooth, toothpaste, toothbrush, wet wipes where you have to use the restroom. Which is hugely important, even if you're going out for 40 hours. Wet wipes and staying clean are very mm -hmm. important. There's there's a significant chance that you will need to use the restroom out there and not have a porta john, so you may need to dig a hole. Right. So uh, be ready to do that. 
Um, and then there's also like deodorant and a mouthwash and stuff like that. Sure. This pouch I use to store my night vision. The, the game lasts the entire 40 hours, so you're gonna have to fight at night too. So I just keep that in here. So there's a padded sack in here. I can keep it kind of safe and stored during the day. And if you don't have night vision yet, or that's not your speed, or you're working up to it, planning the ability to store quick use items, whether it's night vision or anything else you're using in the game on the exterior of the bag is hugely important. So you don't mm -hmm. have to go digging for things. Yeah, certainly you would, if you don't have night vision, you do a bunch of extra flashlights, headlamp, that kind of thing, just so you can see at night. And the big important thing is like, if say you get back to your pack and it's dusk, it's dark, kind of dark and you can't see yet, you need to know exactly where it is on the pack so you can hunt it in the dark. So always putting things in the same places, mm -hmm. sure. That's yeah. huge. The next pouch, I've just got a disposable camera. I keep a Ranger handbook in here, an extra speed loader, an extra Milson West tourniquet, a multi-tool, and this is a USB-C to USB-C cable for my battery pack. Um, a bunch of chem lights, spare batteries for my airsoft gun. And then in here I keep, these are like drink mixes. So sure. I've got drip drop and coffee and- So like a liquid IV caffeine. style, something to keep you hydrated. Exactly. And then something if you if you drink caffeine, caffeinated drinks, Yeah. your choice is to bring some sort of caffeine because it is a very tiring event. And so just a little pick me up to keep going. Yeah, the odds of getting like restful sleep are very slim. Okay. So having caffeine, you're gonna need caffeine. Got it. Well, I do. Walking around with a bunch of monster energy drinks, probably not your advice. It's, you know, sometimes you just gotta have that comfort item and have it with you so sure. you can enjoy that, but it's heavy. So I also bring the mix packs. So in here, I kind of got just like some extra snivel that I don't wanna get lost in the main compartment. So I have an inflatable pillow and a watch cap for at night when it gets cold. And then I just keep a Ziploc of spare socks. You're going to need spare socks for sure. If you're miserable and wet and dirty, it is much easier to be miserable at the event. And you wanna, you wanna optimize the, the good time you're having and being prepared is mm -hmm. setting you on the right direction to do that. Yeah, it's definitely remarkable how, if you're tired and sweaty, how washing your face, washing your hands and changing your socks, washing your feet, changing your socks, how refreshed you'll feel and ready to go. So definitely have that in mind. So moving up to the top of the pack, there is an additional zippered pouch or is, does this give you access to the pack um, itself? So both. So if you open the lid, so there's a, I've got a couple things in the lid. The top one, I keep a poncho. It's, whether it's gonna rain or not is kind of non-negotiable to have a poncho. So this is gonna double as a like wet weather layer or I can toss it over my ruck or toss it over my gear and my gun, keep that dry if, it, if I need to. Or you can string this up in a tree or over a bush or something and just make some shade. Cause sometimes it's just too, it's not raining, but it's too hot and you don't wanna be in the sun and that's gonna be great for that. One of the reasons why that goes up here is I'm a big fan of if everybody in my platoon or my only friends all have the same pack, we all put the poncho in the same place. That way, if there's one guy watching all the rucks and rain starts hitting, he knows where to get to all the ponchos. He can throw it over, throw them over for everybody. Got it. And when this is in the top of your ruck, if it's just sitting there and it starts getting rained on, it's going to offer you a little bit of protection just because it's on top of everything. Sure. The other thing that I've got here is I found this at Walmart one time, so I decided to snag it, but it's just a rubber sitting mat that you use for like a, for like a stadium seat. Yeah. But uh, you sit on it, you could kneel on it. It offers a little bit of water protection on the lid, but it doesn't weigh anything and I just like, like to have it. Again, so. you know, a little comfort goes a long way, mm -hmm, especially mm -hmm. when you're playing extended wow. games of airsoft like that. Yeah. Moving into the pack, what I found really cool, and we kind of discussed this off camera, but we'll talk about it now, is there's kind of a multi-layered system of, of bags within the Alice bag that mm -hmm. you've got going on. And this is something that you told me that you kind of learn over time after doing so many MSW events. So as you can see, the, the layers of onion that have been peeled back here by Spencer as he opened the Alice pack, you have an outside drawstring bag, and that kind of keeps everything contained. Mm -hmm. Inside of that, there is a plastic trash bag. Yeah. And that's kind of, you were saying that your first level of, of waterproofness if you don't have a rain cover and it, it doubles as something else as well. Yeah. So big thing is listen to your cadre and they'll probably instruct you to, instruct you to do this when you get to the game. Um, Cause this is just like a, an easy tip to learn. You're going to be required to have trash bags on you. So what I usually do is I buy a big roll of contractor bags. They're kind of expensive, but they, they come with a ton of them. So I always put all of my stuff inside of the contractor bag and then just in the bag. And so this doubles as all of the stuff in here is like kind of my, it has to stay dry. Sleeping stuff, extra clothes, that kind of thing. So this is just like another redundancy of keeping everything dry. 
And then if you have, say you're changing clothes and you have stuff that's wet and gross or sweaty and you don't want it to get on your bedding, you stick that in the bag outside of the, the contractor bag just so it's kind of separate. Um, and the other thing is like, if you're, you're eating and you're producing trash over the weekend and you don't want to leave it out in the wilderness, um, you put all the trash back in your bag, just stuff it outside of the contractor bag so it stays away from your clean clothes and your sure. sleeping stuff. And then you have the opportunity to, to bag that separately and throw it away at the end of the event. Yeah, basically you just flip the bag inside out, dump all the trash in here and throw it away. So inside of these layers, you were saying, is, is most of your extra clothing and sleep kit. Now, the one thing that is not gonna be in this video is is your sleep system, right? Like you don't have like your cot yes. uh, or a hammock. Yeah. Not that those are required, those are niceties that you've learned over time that are great to have. Mm -hmm. But I think bare minimum, you need a sleeping pad, mm -hmm. like bare minimum. Yeah, so for this, I wanted to like kind of just bring the stuff that I think would be bare minimum. They're like the required items sure. to have. I have a very complex system of how I like to sleep to make myself the most comfortable. Yep. Um, but I think this is gonna be the big, the minimum that you need and be pretty good off. Okay. So in this one, this one is just a, that's a Kifaro Doobie, which is a double thickness Wooby. It's basically just a quilted blanket, but both sides are climate shield, so it's pretty waterproof. And Got you could it. use it as a ground throw or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's super warm. And honestly, sometimes it's too warm. So I don't even honestly need it that much, but it doesn't weigh that much, so. Sure, and this is in addition to a sleeping bag? No sleeping bag, Okay. just that. I kind of set this pack up as if I was going to be going to the next event that's coming up this fall. So it's kind of close to summer, so I wasn't anticipating it being really cold. Sure. So I didn't want to load too much stuff in here, so I'd probably just bring that and a jacket and then probably be fine. Okay, you know, you read on a lot of the Reddit forums and things that, you know, there's a large portion of people that are like, oh, you gotta get the army sleep system. You gotta, you gotta do the whole, you gotta do the bivy and you gotta do the inner thing and the whole three, mm -hmm, the three part mm -hmm. thing. Is that a necessity? Is that something that, You'd say, hey, that's a good starting point, but you will trim it down over time when you realize how much weight and bulk that you're carrying around. Yeah. So when you're first starting out, you might suggest, hey, you should start with a sleeping bag until you find what your tolerance is and then and then slim up. The, the only risk I, I just, I wonder if we want to recommend a Wooby right out the gate to somebody who's never done an MSW game. Well, the, okay, so you're probably talking about the Katoma four piece sleep system, which you are right, that is the best first suggestion to make. And I still use, I, I have the bivy here. So the bivy sack is a non-negotiable item. You bring it to every single game, no matter what. Okay. It's just a, it's like a sleeping bag, but it's Gore-Tex and there's no um, insulation to it at all. So it doesn't, it'll keep you warmer from obviously rain and some wind, but it's not really that warm. So this is, if it's a hot event or really muggy, you, you would probably want just this and no insulation. Um, but if you are a very, there was a last season, there was a very cold event where it was snowing. You would want this and insulation, but this is a staple. You need to have it. This is elements protection. Yes. And the Katoma system, it's cheap, easy to find. And honestly, I've been looking for more modern equivalents to kind of upgrade. Sure. But I have, and I bought a bunch of stuff and found that it isn't as good. So I've just stuck to this one so far. And you can find those surplus, eBay, things like that? Mm -hmm. Anywhere. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So the other pieces that come with this are certainly usable, but when you pack them all up, they're huge and they don't really work that great. Okay. So I would, I mean, if you buy a set, you use it one time and then you'll probably, I'd be willing to bet you'd agree with me. Sure. Well, you don't want to gas yourself trying to carry mm -hmm. everything in the kitchen sink because you are on occasion going to be carrying this ruck at different points in the game. And mm -hmm. when you're already gassed from, you know, taking an objective or defending something, mm -hmm. it can be really taxing on your body to try to pack everything back up and, and carry it. Yeah. So really slimming down to what you need is a really smart way to, to go about it. But, mm -hmm. okay, so we've got Bivy, we've got some elements protection yes. for the ground. And then in here I've got a, this is a inflatable sleeping pad. Yep. So I stick this inside of the Bivy just so it doesn't get exposed to rocks or anything sure. that could pop sure. it. Or even, you know, th this is reasonably waterproof. Yeah. It'd um, be nice if this stays dry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the, the big thing is, just the little bit of warmth this provides and cushion is bar none, you gotta have it. Like I was saying, you have to have a sleeping pad. Whether you decide to go with one of those foam folders or mm -hmm. an inflatable, which is really nice for the weight, you have to have a, a, a sleeping pad. Just, not not just even for the comfort, but the thermal break from the ground, keeping your body heat from, you know, yeah. being sucked up by the ground, you know, being able to get up off of 
uneven terrain and wetness and all of that. The last thing I've got in the dry area in here is just a spare jacket. It's just a low loft kind of jacket. It, but if you toss this over all of the other layers that you're wearing, it's going to be pretty warm. So got it. just in case it, it gets a little chilly. The other thing that I keep in here that's outside of the dry section is this pack has a radio slot, which I don't carry a large, huge radio. But what I do, because this slot here is really high up and close to the back, this is where I put all of the heaviest things that I keep in the ruck. So what I keep is two liters of water. Is that in addition to a Camelback or that sustains you for 40 hours? So I don't use Camelback typically. I'll usually have like another liter or two smaller water, bo water bottles on my person, okay. like in a pouch or something like that. And then you're topping off from And then those. topping off from that. But you typically, I think always, there's a there's fill stations. So right. if you drink all this, you can just refill it. Right, right. And then the other thing is I have a big pack of batteries. So all of my radio batteries, which are unnecessarily heavy, and my recharging bank so I can like, charge my phone and things like that. Right. And that's all heavy stuff, so I keep it in this radio pocket just so it sits really nice in the rug. Right. Right. What Spencer is addressing here is something that you learn in backpacking as well, is that the closer to your center of gravity, the closer to your body that you can keep the heavy items, the less sloshing that the, the mm. backpack is going to do, especially when you need to move quickly or you need to move up grade. Having the weight centered on you and adjusting your straps and your waist belt to keep that, that weight in close to you really helps especially when you're wearing a pack for a long period of time. Alice packs are not known for being the most comfortable packs in the world, but when you're comparing this to a 3DAP or a 2DAP that doesn't have a padded waistband, those can be quite uncomfortable given that you're doing this for 40 hours. Yeah, original original Alice bags are certainly leave a lot to be desired, but if you if you really get lost in the weeds on the the extra straps and pads and stuff like that and a lighter frame and make all the mods done then it starts to become like your project and right. you can match it to you and then it starts to actually excel i think versus a lot of other stuff it's just an off the shelf off the shelf is going to be hard yeah a hard time yeah, yeah cool well is there anything that we've missed in terms of items that you suggest anything that that maybe isn't on the kit currently that you want to throw in there and say hey don't forget this i don't have it right now some stuff i would like to mention is i usually i keep a, a silenced carabiner up here silence just meaning you wrap it with tape so it doesn't clink and clank and so if you're ever near a truck where you're going to ride in a truck you can usually lap, hook this up to a strap on the outside so you don't have to like sit on with sit on your lap when you're in the truck or something sure. like that um, also, typically there's a space here in between the frame and the pad. You can sometimes rig up a pouch in there, and that's a really good spot for things that you need like immediate access to or something that's really heavy because it's it's the closest to your body as anything right. in the pack. And then I think I have a couple other pouches we didn't go into on the outside. Um, so in here, I've just got, I keep my iPro case in here just because it's going to be night and day, so you want to be able to have all your lenses and stuff, so you can sure, swap and clean sure. cleaning things. And Mills and West is one of those events where you are required to wear eye protection for the entirety of the event. Yes. So the ability to go from potentially a tinted lens when it's bright outside to a clear lens at nighttime mm -hmm. is huge. So having that readily accessible is very yeah. important. The middle pouch here? Yeah, last little bit is, this is a, another, non-negotiable for me. I always just keep a Gore-Tex jacket in here just so I've got something spare. I can lend it to somebody if they're cold. If it starts to get wet, I can toss this on really quick without having to break my pack down. Um, but I think it's just, it just, to me, it just fits in the theme of having redundant options for like the worst possible scenarios. Yeah. And then this one I usually keep empty or have like spare stuff for it. If it's like, if the weather is really gonna be really bad and I need more equipment, then I just have extra pockets for that. One thing that you were kind of explaining to me is that you can almost guarantee the weather will never be ideal. Oh yeah. Right, the weather is never, even if you're going to a, you know, a day Milsim game of any kind, right? Just the weather, the weather is never ideal. You have to plan for heat or for rain or mm -hmm. for cold. There will always be some discomfort. So having some way to address inclement weather whether that be a rain, a rain cover or an insulating layer or some way to keep your stuff dry, some level of being able to shield yourself 
from inclement weather is almost a necessity. Well, Spencer, thanks for bringing in your kit. Yeah. Sorry for making you unpack everything. <laughs> Hopefully that was useful advice for you guys going to your first Mills and West game, or if you haven't been in a while and you need a refresher from an expert, you got it here. <laughs> I don't know how to close this. See you later. <laughs> <laughs>